Hello, my wonderful Sagittarius. I hope you all are doing amazing. Today, I'm gonna to be tapping into the energies of those of you that are currently not in communication with your person. So as per usual, I will be starting off with an oracle and we can just clarify those existing energies with tarot. Alrighty. For my Sagittarius in separation, please. Okay, so your first card here is inner peace. So you're very focused on uh, your peace of mind right now, Sagittarius. So not only are you accepting the reality of things, you're trying your best to actually fathom the emotions you're feeling so you can overcome it. That's what I'm getting here because it's almost like you don't want to paint uh, you know, a false picture here. You don't want to plant false hope in your mind. So you're accepting the reality of things um, and you're, you know, accepting your emotions, which essentially is resulting in, in, you know, bringing you a peace of mind here. You're very focused on what makes you happy, which lets me know that you have, you are coming out of a very difficult period here, right? Um, maybe a cycle that felt very repetitive, Maybe you feel like you were trying your best to, you know, solve issues with this person here, but you felt that it wasn't really going anywhere. So this is specifically specifically going to apply to those of you that feel like you've hit some sort of dead end and you're like, I have no choice but put, put myself first at this time. Okay. You feel like when you think about this situation, you're going in circles, right? There's a lot of questions here, but you're like, you know what? It's time to focus on me right now. Um, you guys could be dabbling in, you know, some sort of hobby or a business endeavor or something that's progressing for you that helps you kind of um, ease your mind when it comes to the situation. Um, you guys could feel very overwhelmed when you think about the situation or there's some sort of like anxious energy attached here. And, you know, the anxious energy, you know, stems from a place of feeling like there's a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot in the unknown. Simplicity, yeah. So you guys are trying to not only, you know, simplify what's going on here, you're trying to kind of just quiet your mind is what I see. It's like you you miss just not being so stressed out or, you, or you're going through a period where you're like, I'm getting really tired of thinking about the same thing over and over again, especially because there's nothing being done about it, especially because there's no solution here, okay? Um, many of you could also feel that you um, or in the past year leading up to the separation, things were overcomplicated, right? Maybe you feel like things could have been handled differently, but they were blown out of proportion. Okay, so generic example, maybe you just wanted to have a heart to heart conversation with this person, but it escalated into, um, you know, an argument and you're like, okay, that that's not what I was planning for, right? Some of you think your person overcomplicates things in, in, in their mind here. Could be a case of you um, wanting to, you know, come to a solution, but you feel like your person is overanalyzing the situation. Um, maybe you feel like your person, your person here should just reach out right? Um, so here's what I see. I feel like many of you are trying to get to the bottom of the issues um, that are on your mind right now. But again, the main thing I'm getting here is trying to um, gain a peace of mind again. You're very tired. You're very overwhelmed, okay? Um, many of you have a very tired heart at this time. So that's why you're doing things that make your heart happy, that make you feel more at ease, right? It's almost like, okay, I want to pour into my own cup now. I'm tired of putting my desires on the back burner. I feel overwhelmed and I don't like this feeling. Stillness, yeah. I mean, your first three cards are just letting me know that you will be at a very peaceful state. You know, many of you could be spending time alone or I'm just picking up on you guys finally turning your back towards the situation um, or what feels like finally, right? Because it's something that you have been thinking about for some time now. And um, again, with stillness, there the reason why there's a swan there is because there's beauty in that, right? Sometimes it could it could feel very um, lonely. You could feel very alone, very misunderstood. But there's also beauty in accepting the truth because you're able to move forward, right? You guys are turning your back towards something that no longer serves you. So if it's not this entire connection, it's certain aspects of it, right? The things that make you feel negative, the things that cause some sort of heartache. You're like 
why do I keep thinking about something that hurts me? You know what I mean? Like it could be that there's some sort of um, like harsh exchange of words or something that you're continuously thinking about that already occurred. Um, and you feel like, again, why am I holding on to this? It's not serving me. It's like you could think about that one thing and then it would make your day feel negative or it would make you, it would put you in a bad mood. And so you're trying to come out of um, letting these uh, thoughts control you, um, especially the negative ones pertaining to this connection here. I feel like this connection caused you a lot of disappointment and you're pretty much finally coming out of a place of feeling um, like a very heavy period is the best way for me to explain it. Bottom of the deck here, guys, two of pentacles followed by the queen of wands, two of cups. Yeah, this is someone who's highly attracted to you. You know, they see you as a soulmate here, but with that two of pentacles, they're going back and forth in their mind. And this could have been the past energy as well. You know, you felt the emotion, you felt like you guys bonded on a very deep level, but when it came to actually pursuing a commitment or, you know, expressing emotions, you always felt like there was this back and forth energy with this person. Um, some of you may even feel like it was very on and off when it came to the connection, right? Um, you know, kind of, they would, they would give you their all and they would pull back their energy. They would give you their all, they would, they would pull back their energy. So then this essentially resulted in you feeling like, hey, okay, well, I don't really know what to believe in. I don't know where to put my faith. I don't know if we can actually have a commitment here, if this is going to continuously be um, on and off. I feel this person feels very connected to you with the Two of Cups. This is someone who loves you. You know, this is someone who um, feels like you understand them on all levels. The Two of Cups is like a soulmate energy or someone that you feel like you're destined to be with, right? Split the deck, Knight of Swords. Could be an air sign or it's someone who just wants to rush in with communication. In the past year, I feel like there's a lot of regret for what something that they said. You know, the Knight of Swords could be someone who's very quick on their feet. You know, uh, they always know what to say. But the con of the card is sometimes it could be someone who wants the last word. Or it could be someone who is a selective listener, right? So this person feels like they did not hear you out. Or they did not give you the opportunity to um, express your side of the story here. So there is a lot of, uh, you know, deep regret and sorrow surrounding that. Alrighty, let's see. The Fool. Okay, so some of you could be dealing with an Aries here, possibly um, a Gemini as well. But I just feel that there is this energy of them wanting to, you know, take a leap of faith towards you. They're not really sure what the future holds. They're not really sure how you're feeling, but they feel like they need to do something. So when you see the Knight of Swords as well as the Fool, which we just uh, viewed the Knight of Swords here, it seems that this person is um, could be impulsive at times. So, you know, it, it's great that they want to do something and they want to rush in, but you're wondering, you know, what's the real motive behind it? So at the bottom of the deck, we have the Hierophant, right? Which talks about, or, or which is ruled by uh, Taurus. Taurus rules the card. So you guys could be involved with the Taurus, but it talks about commitment, right? Analyzing what went wrong in the past versus what worked between the both of you. This person feels like not everything um, was, was terrible or not everything was a mistake. But with the tower there, they do feel like a lot has come, you know, crashing down here. Okay, this is someone who wants to take a leap of faith towards a commitment, but right now they just feel like they need to do something, they need to do anything, but this may result in you viewing them as unpredictable or impulsive, right? Okay, you're rushing in with communication, fine, but what is, what is the end all, right? Like, like, what's the end goal here? If you do speak to me right now, where is this going to go moving forward? I feel like that's the question at hand. Yeah, two of swords. So the mutual energy here is... Um, kind of like indecisive or back and forth you know if this person were to communicate with you i don't think that you would be completely certain that you want to communicate right away this is someone where if they were to reach out to you you may not reply right away or like um it's this energy of you still going back and forth in your mind about whether you forgive this person or whether you've healed from what occurred in the past the two of swords could also be a tad bit of a blindfolded energy, right? So what I mean by that, guys, is like maybe you feel like you were telling your person things or you were sending them hints or something that's blatantly in front of your person you feel like they were ignoring, okay? So here's what I see. There is a party here who is very realistic, right? There's someone here who's operating from a more of a logical state. But then there's also a party here who is still trying to see past illusions, so they could be painting a different picture in their mind, or they could just be um, having a hard time accepting the reality of things. So, you know, whichever side you resonate with here, I do, I do feel like there are opposing mentalities. That's the point I'm trying to make, right? And so with the Two of Swords here, it's ca causing some sort of indecision. 
if this person speaks to you, for example, if you feel like you have more of a realistic, logical approach and this person speaks to you, right? And you pick up on them still being a bit indecisive or wishy-washy. It's going to contradict what you think. It's going to go against what you believe. So you're not going to want to involve yourself in the situation or so that's what I see in the cards. You want this person to approach you, you know, heads on with the truth, uh, you know, like head on with the truth, bringing forward some sort of clarity. And you don't want this person to be wishy-washy and you don't want this person to be impulsive um, either. Something that you probably picked up on during the you know uh, duration of the bond here is this person is very quick to reply or they're very quick to say things to you, but they don't necessarily always follow through with what they say. So now you're at a point of, okay, well, then I'm not going to really focus on what you say. I'm going to focus on what you do, right? So, you know, said all that to say this person's words don't have that much power in your eyes anymore. Right, Sagittarius? You feel like, well, if you just say so many things, but you don't follow through on them, you know, what makes you think I'm going to believe what you say now? What has changed? Are you more action oriented now? Or is it the same thing? Stillness. Two of Wands. We have a lot of twos here. You guys could be seeing two, two, two a lot. Okay. Um, a lot of mirroring energy as well. I will say that. But with the two of Wands, guys, it's almost like your person is, they have hope for the future. But here's the issue. Some of you wish that this person would stop waiting for some sort of hint from you or waiting for you to take the leap. You, like, like for some of you, you may have felt that this separation is something that you wish would teach this person that they need to take the initiative. They need to take accountability. They need to do something first, right? You wish that they would take the lead. So the lesson behind the separation is you wanting this person to step up to the plate. But with the two of wands, there's still a tad bit of a waiting game going on. Oh, well, how does Sagittarius feel? Or if I reach out to Sagittarius, how will they reply to me? Right? That sort of thing. And I feel like for many of you, again, you just wish your person would reach out or you just wish that they would do something first. And, and it's fine, you know, like, you know, you're probably fine with taking the lead, but sometimes you don't want to. Right. So you have to honor your feelings as well. It's like, OK, I know how to take the lead and, uh, you know, I know maybe I can reach out right now, but I don't want to. Right. A relationship is a two way street, so it can't just be me that's putting in all the effort. It can't just be me that's, you know, uh, fixing everything all the time. You want more action from this person because you want them to prove to you the authenticity of their emotions. Like, do you care like you say you do? Do you love me like you say you do? Right. And if you do, why do you hold back, right? That's the thing here. That's the blockage. The fool. Let's see. They want to work on things. This could be someone who uh, you met online online, or like in a workplace setting. But with the Three of Pentacles, it's someone who's trying to make a plan. So the first step, because the Three of Pentacles is a three-step process, right? So it talks about analyzing, planning, and um, executing here. So right now, they're in this energy of planning, okay? Analyzing and planning right now. And what they want to do is come together. This is someone who feels like when you guys agree on things, it's, it's like great and they're on top of the world. But when you guys disagree, it's like the complete opposite. So this could be a bond here where there's like a lot of extremes. You know what I mean, Sagittarius? Like where you feel like, okay, um, generic example. Maybe you feel like every time you guys disagree, it leads to a separation. Or every time you guys disagree on something, this person just avoids you as a whole. So you're like, okay, I can't, I can't deal with that. You know, because we are going to have disagreements um, in, in relationships here, but we need to speak about it. Right? So some of you wonder, why does it always have to lead to a separation? Are you not wanting to speak to me? Like, why can't we just, you know, sit down like two civilized human beings and have a conversation and get to the bottom of it? The lack of maturity here really, really, uh, uh, you know, rubs you the wrong way, uh, Sagittarius. Two of Swords. Five of Cups, yeah. And if you see in the card, she's kind of looking back there. So it's like this person's very focused on what you're doing. You know, when they think about you, there's a lot of uh, regret and sorrow that fills their heart. 
because they miss you. The five of cups is an energy of focusing on the past. Um, it's an energy of just feeling very um, left out, very misunderstood. It's like, it's almost like your person feels how they made you feel. They're like, oh, it's my turn to feel the sorrow or it's my turn to feel the regret here. Because for some reason, Sagittarius, I feel like like leading up to the separation, like your person could have been very nonchalant or they could have been like, oh yeah, you know, I don't care, you know, that sort of thing. And now it's like, they really do care. It's just, they can't really mask that anymore. It's someone who is running from their emotions pretty much in a very avoidant energy. And now it's kind of hitting them full throttle is what I'm picking up on. Okay, guys. So with the two of swords and the five of cups here, um, again, I feel like this is someone who misses you. Okay. They're thinking about, uh, you know, the good times together, but they're also very um, focused on how they broke something between the both of you, whether that was trust, right? Whether that was the bond as a whole, like they, like they feel like they ruined something here. There's a lot of fault that they're placing on themselves. They're operating from an emotional state. And this person could feel like things ended because they failed to change something about themselves. Like with the judgment card, guys, it, it talks about like leaving an old uh, way of living or being behind in order to create um, or manifest a new reality here. So with the tower, it could be that this person feels they didn't make a change. So, you know, divine intervention, right? Where, you know, some of you feel like this person was stringing you along until they were going to make a decision. Or again, they just weren't making the neat, uh, much needed changes here where things came crashing down. So when this person thinks about the situation, they think that this separation happened way too quickly. They were not expecting this at all. It was very unexpected. It was very abrupt. Some of you may be involved with a Scorpio. Two of Wands. Okay, so six of wands in reverse. Some of you feel that if they're... Okay, so how do I break this down? All right, okay, so if this waiting game proceeds, okay, some of you feel like there won't be victory, there won't be success. Like you're not willing to play the waiting game, okay? You're not waiting on this person. You're not going to put your entire life on pause. They can either reach out or, you know... Some of you are in that very like black and white energy, okay? Now, for others of you, you feel like the reason why there's no success right now is because you were always expected to do something. You were always expected to fix, uh, you know, the mistakes here, or you were always expected to reach out first, right? So again, if there is a lack of reciprocity here, many of you don't see this going far, right? Um, I just feel like many, many of you are getting very tired of the waiting game. Yeah, take a look at this, guys. Page of Pentacles in reverse, and the pages in the deck are messengers. So what this person's holding back from telling you with the King of Cups and the Five of Wands is, first of all, they feel like they need to compete for your attention. They may feel that you are speaking to other people. If that's not the case, they feel like there's a lot of external influences, okay? Maybe this was a problem in the past where you felt like your person is easily influenced or they're not surrounded by the best company. Um, and with the King of Cups here, what they want to do is tell you how they feel. But many of you feel like they're not gaining that comfort. They're not um, taking that first step here. What I see right now is a waiting game, you know, in the in the future outcome here with the two of wands, you know, six of wands in reverse. And and some of you feel like, again, if, if it continues uh, this way, you, you're not going to invest in the situation. You're not going to wait around for this person, right? Six of wands. Yeah, wanting to bring forward some sort of clarity here. And again, with the Six of Wands in reverse with the Ace of Swords, many of you feel like the clarity that you receive will either change your opinion on this person, A, or B, the lack of clarity that you received from this person is what you formed your opinion on, right? So it's going to resonate differently considering it's a general read. But I just feel like many of you are wanting to move forward from this connection if there is no progress. You're not wanting to, again, wait around not to sound too repetitive. And some of you definitely don't want to reach out first. I do see that here. And that could be the very frustrating thing for you as well, especially if you feel like it's not your job um, to reach out or you're not the one who owes this person an apology. And so many of you feel like this person's waiting for you to reach out, but you're kind of like, what makes you think that I'm going to do so, right? So my wonderful Sagittarius, that is what I'm getting for you this week. I really do hope you were able to find a message that resonated with you here today. And uh, thank you so much for your time.